talking about President Trump. Roll tape. Well, I'm going to keep speaking out. Apparently, you know, my former opponent is obsessed with my speaking out. <laughs> Apparently, there was another somebody told me tweet today. Honestly, between tweeting and golfing, how does he get anything done? I don't understand it. Notice the body language uh, yeah, there of yeah. Bill Clinton. He didn't look real happy about what was being no. said. Oh, the man on the screen right now is Corey Lewandowski. He is a former campaign manager of uh, Mr. Trump. I say that what Hillary is saying these days, well over a year after the election, I think that's good for Republicans. I think it's good for President Trump. What say you? Stuart, I have to agree with you. You know, you have to remember, Hillary Clinton is still probably the de facto head of the Democratic Party. She was a terrible candidate. They're a rudderless ship. They have nobody who's leading them. They are a party now that is on the two coasts, the east and the west coast. They've given up on middle America. They are fighting a tax cut plan on, on for no reason whatsoever because they don't want to give tax relief to middle class working families. And Hillary Clinton is still fighting a battle from a year ago in what was probably the worst election loss in modern times because she was a terrible candidate. So this is great for the Republican Party. Uh, I, I do want to just segue for a second to ask about tax cuts. Uh, I say we are going to get a tax cut deal this year. I, I say that because I can't believe the Republican Party will come so far and then stop it at the last minute and say no to tax cuts. Now, I'm going overboard on this, and I'm asking almost all of our guests, do you agree with me? <clears throat> I can't imagine that the Republicans will stop at the last minute. What say you? Look, I, I think the president is someone who is going to will this to get done. And I saw your interview over the weekend on Fox and Friends, and you were very optimistic. I'm optimistic because the president is back on our soil. He's, he's up on Capitol Hill last week. He's talking about getting this done. We're going to cut the business tax. We're going to give tax relief to the middle class working families. But let's be clear, Stuart. If we don't get this bill done, there will be repercussions at the ballot box in 2018, and the Republicans will be held accountable for that. Can you tell us definitively that the president does indeed watch this program? Because he tweeted about it again this morning, you know. We're very happy, by the way. Well, <laughs> well look, I, I don't know what the president was watching today, but I know he's a big fan of, of the work that you do. And I know he's a big fan of the Fox Network. And so because, look, you guys tell the truth for a change. And I know the mainstream media doesn't want to do that. But when you tell the truth, the president tunes in. OK, Corey Lewandowski, we'll have you back any day you like. It's Election Day, as we've been telling you. And the Trump factor is looming large in Virginia and in New Jersey. Uh, not so much in New York, Kevin Kelly. <laughs> both, states, both states are holding the first gubernatorial election since President Trump took office. In Virginia, former RNC chairman Ed Gillespie is facing off against Democratic Lieutenant Governor Ralph Northam. Uh, the president is tweeting out his support for Gillespie. Uh, he, he wrote this this morning, for example. Ed Gillespie will totally turn around the high crime and poor economic performance of Virginia. Uh, MS-13 and crime will be gone. Vote today ASAP. Ralph Northam will allow crime to be rampant in Virginia. He's weak on crime, weak on our great vets, anti-Second Amendment, and has been horrible on Virginia economy. Vote Ed Gillespie today, says the president. The president, however, never joined Gillespie on the campaign trail. We want to bring in former Trump campaign manager and Lewandowski strategic advisor, CEO and president, Corey Lewandowski. Corey, it's good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Hey, good morning. What do you think about that? How come he never joined Gillespie on the campaign trail, and yet he's all about Gillespie this morning? Well, as you know, the president has endorsed Ed Gillespie's campaign for governor. And the only reason I think he didn't join him on the campaign trail is that he's been in the midst of this, you know, longest international trip that any president has undertaken in a lifetime. I think going back to, you know, the early Bush administration, uh, so 19, early 1990s, this is a 12-day trip. There was a series of preparations that had to go into this. And with the crunch time right now, Election Day in Virginia, it was just a timing issue. But the president is fully behind Ed Gillespie. He's tweeted multiple times asking for people to go and support his campaign. And he's fully supporting Ed's campaign for governor of Virginia. Corey, Brian Brenberg here. If Ed Gillespie pulls this thing out, is this going to be the, the model for Republican candidates? Not bringing the president on the campaign trail, not totally aligning with him, but accepting the tweets, accepting sort of the air cover that the president provides. I mean, are we looking at a new model potentially if Gillespie wins here? Oh, I don't think so. If you go back and look at where Ed Gillespie was in this race just two short weeks ago, before Donald Trump uh, first endorsed Ed Gillespie and now has been talking about it, 
Ed was down significantly in the polls. And what we have seen is, once again, the president's support, particularly in southwest Virginia, is probably going to increase the vote turnout for Ed Gillespie. And what that means is, because of the president's endorsement, if Ed wins this election, it is going to be in large part because of the president's endorsement and his continued support of Ed in this race. Well, at core, it's Dagan McDowell, born and raised in Virginia and still proud, proud of where I come from, even though I live in New York City, the land of <laughs> left-wing liberals. But that doesn't give Ed Gillespie credit for what he has done, and that's hitting Ralph Northam on the economy. Again, a weaker economy, particularly in Northern Virginia, which is solely reliant on government spending, also hitting him on Confederate money. Northam's stance, which he tried to back away from, on tearing down Confederate monuments in the state. Ed does understand what those conservative Republican voters want from their governor, which they didn't get from Clinton crony McAuliffe. Well, well, that's exactly right. And this issue about the monuments in the state of Virginia is about an 80-20 issue, and it's a 95-5 issue amongst Republicans, if not better, which means, you know, leaving those monuments in place to remember the people who came before us, whether you agree or disagree, is part of the American history. And Ed has supported that where his opponent has opposed that. And so what you'll see is Ed has run a good race, and the Democrat candidly has run a terrible race the last two weeks. And if you want to talk about fear-mongering, just look at the commercials that are running in the state of Virginia right now, where you have the pickup truck with the flag in the back, you know, chasing down you know, what looks to be immigrant children uh, for fear that there's going to be a reprisal or something bad's going to happen. That's the Democratic playbook right now, which is fear-mongering as opposed to actually talking about what the Democrats want to do to move the country in the right direction. That's why the, that's why the party's mm -hmm. falling apart. Yep. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I was just going to, I'll just add really quickly, uh, the critical um, areas to watch for turnout, because that's what, what's going to happen, is Fairfax, which is largely Democrat. They've got to get the votes out. Um, when McAuliffe ran, the turnout was up 12 percent from oh. the previous governor's race. Also, the Tidewater area. Northam is a former Army doctor. So if you look at Virginia Beach, that could go Democrat. And then the turnout among African Americans in Richmond. Those are the three critical areas to but, watch. By the Way, in terms of New Jersey, this is a good op-ed this morning. The sorry state of New Jersey uh, in the Journal. Uh, ch check that out. But, 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 Corey, we want to get your take on the FBI because the former director, obviously James Comey, under fire again this morning. Newly released memos show that he changed the language in his draft statement when referring to Hillary Clinton and her email case. So, in an early draft of his statement, he writes this: There is evidence to support a conclusion that Secretary Clinton and others used the email server in a manner that was gross negligent with respect to handling of classified information. Then later he changes the, the wording. He changes gross negligence to, quote, extremely careless. Now the Senate Judiciary Committee is demanding that the FBI identify the person who made those changes and why. What do you make of all of this, Coy? Well, as you know, the, the penalties under the law for a grossly ne negligent finding is greatly more significant than what Jim Comey has come up with. And unfortunately, what we've seen now is a pattern of Jim Comey who has politicized this issue. He has lied to Congress on multiple occasions under oath. He has misrepresented the facts of this case on so many different occasions. And what he, we've also seen that he's done, which is a breach of the FBI policy, is taken information that he has obtained while the FBI director and publicly and privately leaked it to his former professor to make sure it made it into the mainstream media, which is a clear violation of the FBI policies. I believe the Senate Investigation Committee, uh, uh, Senator Grassley, and moreover the Senate Judiciary Committee should open an active investigation against Jim Comey for potential perjury charges to Congress and look and see if he did something which he was grossly negligent of, which is changing the facts of this case to not go after Hillary Clinton, which she should have been gone after. It's just incredible the way that the FBI was just in the pocket of the Clinton campaign. It's, it's really extraordinary. The more that comes out on Jim Comey is just extraordinary. Corey, thanks very much. We appreciate your insights this morning. Corey Lewandowski there.